Yeah, welcome uh, to our talk, uh, how to build your own, how to build your own high performance charger with Everest. Um, as you might notice, uh, my co-speaker is not here today. Uh, it's because uh, he's sick and uh, this is very sad because he's even more experienced in Everest uh, than me and probably in the end uh, when you have questions, uh, he uh, would have been able to answer, but uh, you have to take what you have. Uh, that's me. <laughs> you know. uh, my name is Andreas. Uh, I'm working at Pionix uh, since 2021 on Everus. Um, my background is electrical engineering, and at Pionix, I'm working on CICD, um, on internal tooling, uh, for example, the tooling to build our documentation. Um, and even some more tasks in uh, our internal framework. Um, yeah, uh, the specific part is named uh, error framework. Uh, nothing you can uh, imagine about, probably, but yes. Um, okay, now what is uh, this talk about? Uh, I'm very happy to see that there are quite a few people who uh, are interested in EV charging. Um, I will start uh, with uh, what is Everest in general uh, about the project and the organizational structure of the open source part. Um, yeah, then uh, how a DC charging session actually work in detail. Um, and then in the end, uh, yeah, some schematic similar uh, diagrams on uh, how you could design your own high performance charger. Yeah, what is Everest? Um, you could say Everest is like the Android for charging stations. So uh, the go goal is uh, world domination and to have uh, every charger in the world based on Everest. Uh, that is not the case currently. Um, yeah, and we are an LF Energy project um, founded in 2021 by Pionix. Um, Apache 2 license, that means uh, the code is uh, very free, available, and you can take it and sell it uh, without paying any license. Um, yeah, it runs on any embedded Linux. Um, it's very customizable, uh, so our framework is module-based, and you can uh, potentially write your own modules uh, and dynamically Configure them and connect them. Um, yeah, and the currently set of modules already cover the most important protocols in the EV charging world. So, for example, OCPP or ISO 15118. Um, yeah, Everest also includes a graphical web interface, um, energy management. And uh, the modules I already mentioned, you can write in multiple langu languages like C++, Python, JavaScript, um, or also Rust. Uh, here, you can, here you can see a very chaotic slide uh, of which protocols and standards are out there in the field. And uh, you see on the left the categorization uh, into uh, grid, cloud, AC, and DC, and uh, also a timeline when these standards came up. And in green, there are the standards we already support, uh, yeah, like OCPP, ISO 15.11.8, uh, and so on. Um, the black ones are the ones we are currently working on. For example, EEBus is something I personally work on, uh, and in white are the the rest of the standards we uh, have on our roadmap since uh, we want to support uh, hopefully all protocols and standards in the future. Uh, yeah, Everest is uh, driven by a good community. So you can see uh, in orange the line uh, of the, the total contributors, uh, which is uh, still growing. Uh, we are about uh, 250 at the moment. 
Uh, and in blue, you see the current active runs. So for the last month, August, it was uh, 58, I think, um, which are not all from Pionix. So in the next slide, uh, you see uh, where these contributors are located, um, mainly in Germany, probably because uh, Pionix is located in Germany. And uh, we have also contributed contributors from the United States, the United Kingdom, Italy, and the Netherlands. Yeah, it's a very uh, broad global community. So typical uh, contributors are uh, standardization bodies, governments, universities, uh, car OEMs, and even more. Uh, Okay, uh, next I want to explain a bit uh, how Everest was built up and uh, how it fits in the LF Energy. Uh, so here you can see the uh, quite new government structure of the uh, LF Energy. Um, at the left we have the governing board, which is responsible for uh, budgets, marketing and strategy. Uh, directly next to it, it's uh, the tech, the technical advisory. Council, uh, which basically technical manages uh, the projects. And very new is uh, the layer next to it, the uh, SIG layer, the special interest groups, um, which is a group of projects that can uh, collaborate on each other, which have a similar interest. So uh, in our case, the interest is EV charging. Um, so the EV charging SIG is uh, newly uh, grounded or newly founded, uh, introduced. Um, yeah, and in this uh, SIG, uh, there is uh, also another project, the Citroen OS, and our project, Everest. Um, yeah, and uh, the idea is to have there even more projects uh, just has started. Uh, and for bigger projects like Everest is, uh, there's also the possibility to uh, yeah, split down in working groups uh, speci specific topics to even work more uh, efficient on tasks. Um, yeah, back to, uh, sorry, back to the uh, middle layer, the uh, SIG. Uh, I just want to give you a quick insight in the kickoff meeting of the uh, special interest group EV charging. Um, we defined four goals for the next 12 months. The first one is uh, identify other projects that uh, potentially fit in this group. And um, yeah, goal two is uh, to identify uh, gaps that might be not covered, cover, covered by uh, existing projects and uh, Third goal is, um, yeah, of course, finding collaboration between these projects, maybe uh, testing with each other. Um, yeah. And the fourth goal is, since it is the very first special interest group in the LF Energy, is to be an example uh, on how to be a good special interest group and how to be effective on that. Yeah, um, now we are again at the uh, working group level. So uh, Everest is uh, break down in uh, working groups. Um, this enables a more focused work on specific topics. So the two most active working groups at the moment, I would say, is car communication and cloud communication, uh, where yeah, and these two working groups covers uh, yeah, protocols uh, between the charging station and the cloud and the charging station and uh, the electric vehicle. Um, yeah, next working group is uh, Everest Framework and Tools, uh, which is mainly about our internal framework we use um, and the tools we use for building uh, the uh, framework and the whole system. Um, yeah, and uh, this is the place where uh, yeah, big architecture things are discussed. Um, then we also have an CICD and testing working group, which is about uh, 
GitHub Actions, what we want to be covered by GitHub Actions, um, and also testing uh, yeah, with uh, software in the loop and also with hardware in the loop. Um, yeah. Then we have uh, the general and Q&A working group, which uh, is mainly about uh, yeah, onboarding new contributors and to uh, yeah, cover topics that are not covered by any other working group. And very, very, very new is uh, the energy management working group. Uh, its first call will be tomorrow. So it is not really existing yet, but uh, tomorrow it will be. Um, yeah, and why, why do we need now a new working group? It's basically because there are more and more contributions uh, related to the energy management energy management uh, part in Everest, um, yeah, like EEBOS and OpenADR, for example. And so now there is uh, the need to align on this work. And uh, yeah, what we are discussing in working groups is uh, like uh, open PRs, uh, open issues, and uh, yeah, discuss architecture, um, and so on, everything. Uh, in this case, related to energy management. So if you are currently working on something related to energy management, uh, for example, smart charging or V2G, EEBOS, uh, you really should join our new working group tomorrow. Um, there will be the kickoff meeting. Um, yeah, and current plan is to do a B-weekly cycle on this, uh, always on Tuesday. Um, I put uh, the Zoom link in so you can just join. So now we start uh, with the really interesting part of the talk, uh, the DC charging. Uh, at first I bought an image of uh, the plug. Um, the plug has multiple pins. There are four for AC charging, so it's a combined uh, plug, and we have two uh, for DC charging, DC minus and DC plus. And we have uh, three uh, more pins, uh, PP, which is not used in EVSE uh, DC charging, uh, PE, which is protective earth, and CP, the control pilot. And this control pilot uh, has two tasks, uh, which is um, yeah, PWM, uh, which um, um, yeah, which is referring to protective earth and um, yeah, and the other thing is the uh, power line communication, uh, the PLC, um, which is also referring to the protective earth and both applications are run in parallel. Um, so now we go step by step to uh, um, yeah, a, D a DC charging session. Um, and it starts by uh, going to a charging station with your car, with your electric vehicle, and you plug it in. Then the uh, EVSE, the charging station, enables uh, the control pilot signal at uh, 5%, uh, which signals uh, that, PL uh, that HLC, uh, high level charging, is needed since uh, the normal range would be 10% uh, to 95% for AC charging. Um, yeah. So in the next step, uh, the goal is to find the correct EVSE, uh, which is a thing because uh, on the same control pilot uh, wire can be multiple EVSEs. So uh, you have to find a way to uh, communicate to the correct charging station or to the correct uh, connector. Um, this is done by uh, sending a broadcast. So the car sends a broadcast um, who's there um, and all the EVSEs will reply on that. And then you basically look, okay, which EVSE has the best signal noise ratio and uh, the EV uh, selects then uh, the EVSE. And 
yeah, exchange the uh, network membership key. Um, and with this, uh, the car can join now the logical network of the correct EVSE. So next step when you found your EVSE uh, is to uh, get an IP of the uh, charging station. For this, uh, the car again sends a, broad a broadcast uh, via UDP uh, with the uh, SECC discovery protocol request. Um, yeah, and the EVSE will reply with an IP address and a port number and if TLS is enabled or not. Uh, then uh, the uh, yeah, the car again sends first uh, the supported protocols and the charging station can now select which protocol should be used. Uh, example for, for example, uh, ISO 1511-8-2 or ISO 1511-8-20. Um, yeah, and these protocols even have uh, more subdialects which uh, has to be handled implicitly on the fly. Um, so uh, after this, the uh, session setup happens. Um, the goal is to initiate uh, a charging session and uh, so EV and EVSE exchange IDs and the EVS ID sets the session ID. And then um, the EV wants to find out which services are uh, provided by the charging station. Um, a typical offer is a payment um, or ACDC or other services like internet access. Um, so, and this time, it's the first time the car uh, knows that it may be a DC charging uh, that it maybe can do DC charging, um, but it could still be AC ISO 1511.8. So not 100% not sure yet. Um, yeah, and the next, uh, the EV selects the service, um, then um, the EV requests the authorization, and then we are in a loop until uh, the user, uh, for example, swipes his RFID card and authorize this session. And um, yeah, with this authorization, um, we can now uh, check the capabilities of EV and EVSE. Uh, the EV uh, starts again by sending its capabilities and then the EVSE responds with its own capabilities. Um, which is, uh, for example, min-max voltage, uh, the current, the power schedule um, with pricing and availab availability in it. Um, but these schedules, so a schedule is basically uh, information that are assumed for the future, um, are mostly not supported by EVs in the field. Um, yeah, next step, we are very, uh, close to the actual uh, charging uh, process. Uh, the next step is the cable check. And uh, for this, uh, the EV signals, okay, I want to do a cable check, which is done by a specific state in the PWM. Uh, and you can set a state in the PWM signal by uh, switching the voltages uh, the PWM is running on. Um, so the battery of the car is still disconnected, but uh, the EVSE now uh, yeah, connects 500 volts or any other uh, voltage limit. And yeah, it checks basically if the uh, resistance uh, to protective earth uh, is okay. And this happens, so uh, it makes that much, uh, that many uh, measurements since uh, it got uh, a valid measurement and then it responds with okay or with faulted. Uh, we assume the isolation is okay, 
so we can uh, go on in our charging station. Yeah. Um, next step is uh, the pre-charging. Um, yeah, a problem of uh, connecting to connecting 400 volts uh, to the EV is uh, that the voltage level might be not the same and then you have some sparks and the contactors can weld together. Um, so the EV sends it battery voltage and the EVs E sets its own uh, out uh, voltage to the same. And yeah, this happens in a loop uh, until both voltages are on the same level. Um, yeah, but some cars don't really uh, check that, so um, there can still be uh, failures. And this is why a charging station always should have uh, a protecting pre-charge resistor. So now, all steps from uh, 1 to 11 are only preparation, and now we are at the uh, power delivery. So now we uh, finally connect to the battery. Uh, this is always done by the car. So the car closes the contactor um, and the uh, car requests uh, the uh, voltage and current and the EVSE has to, applies, um, to apply these voltage and current limits. Um, yeah, and only the EV again can stop this charging station this uh, charging session. Um, so if the charging station wants to exit this uh, session, it needs to request it. Um, yeah, and if, if the car decides to exit, uh, the power is shut down and uh, the contactors open again. And the uh, control pilot uh, switches its state again. Uh, after this is done, the uh, car can uh, verif verify um, if the contactor has welded uh, together. This is done by uh, opening the contactors and just verify if it's successfully opening. Um, yeah, when the uh, charging station is stopped, the uh, high-level charging uh, session, session is shut down and uh, the car is has stopped uh, the session. Uh, this can also mean it has paused or finishing the session. So after this, uh, the control pilot stops its PWM. Um, and then there are two, or theoretically, there are two options to uh, resume or restart this session, um, which can be done by again uh, turning on the PWM signal. Um, and if you just pause your session, you can start with uh, step four, the SDP. Um, but if you finish your session, you have to start again at uh, step three, the slack. Um, in our case, we stopped the charging session and we now have a charged car and can drive down the road uh, and plug out the car before we're doing this. And yeah, we have a charged vehicle. So uh, now I want to uh, go more in detail how a charger is built up. Uh, this is a quite rough overview about a typical uh, charger. Uh, in blue, you have the uh, power line. So uh, starting on the left, there's the AC-DC converter, then you have a DC power meter, you have an isolation monitor, and you have contactors that you can uh, close and open, which connecting the charging station to the car. Um, yeah, and these are controlled by a high-level controller um, via CAN, Modbus, or GPIOs. Uh, and this controller also um, has or needs to have a PLC modem and it controls the PWM signal on the uh, control pilot signal. 
So uh, you can do it by your own, but you can also use uh, Yak and Yeti. That is what we have done uh, in our little cube there. Um, actually, the Yeti can be uh, reused for this because uh, yeah, it is designed for AC charging, but we can use it for uh, yeah, the PWM signal and the PLC. Um, so this reusing is not really uh, production ready, but for a proof of concept or, or an experimental setup, it's uh, quite okay. Um, on the right, you can see the schema, how, does it, how it is connected. Uh, Again, from the left to the right, uh, you have the AC-DC converter, uh, you have a power meter, you have the isolation monitor, and the contactors, uh, which are covered by the Yeti board. Um, so in the upper part, there's the YAC board, and in the uh, bottom part, there's, there's the Yeti board. Um, the YAC is... Uh, the uh, high-level controller in this case, uh, it has uh, a Raspberry Pi on board. It has uh, CAN, UART, USB, LAN, and RS485. Um, it also provides a display connector, uh, a PLC modem, and of course, it runs on Everest. And if you want to use it or if you want to create your own board, you can uh, check this QR code or the uh, URL is uh, the same. Um, we have uh, yeah, a public available reference hardware and you can find the schematics there. Same is uh, valid for the Yeti board, um, yeah, which has the uh, AC release, um, which uh, has an AC power meter, uh, the CP signal and a theoretical uh, full AC power path, what we don't need for the DC charging. Um, yeah, and in the end, it's responsible for the safety since it closes the contactors to the car. Um, and as I said, you can also find it online in the reference hardware. Here you see a very detailed uh, diagram of the uh, Yeti and Yak uh, combination. Um, I don't want to go uh, in the detail here, but uh, just to show roughly, it's similar to the diagram I show, showed in the beginning. Um, but if you are uh, building this in the reality, it's quite more complex. Then uh, I brought uh, two pictures of, of our cubes uh, from our headquarter. On the left, you see our very first experimental DC setup, uh, which supports up to 22 kilowatts. And in the right, you see the K2, uh, which provides up to 70 kilowatts. Um, here we have a look under the hood from the uh, first uh, charger. And there you can see the Yeti board, the Yak board, you can see the DC power supply in the bottom. Um, yeah, so just uh, an insight uh, how this looks inside the cube, uh, very experimental and uh, yeah, very heavy too. So what do we do when we uh, want to test cars in the field and we might not want to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to take this heavy charger with us, uh, maybe in the train, uh, would, wouldn't be that uh, practical. So we came up with the micro megawatt charger. This micro megawatt charger is basically very similar to this big cube. But the big limitation is that it, it provides up to 1,250 volts, but only up to uh, 0.8 milliampers and up to 1 watt. So you can't really charge the car, but you uh, can test uh, the full communication and uh, you can do a full charging session uh, and you can also do isolation monitoring. 
So with this, we are able to test uh, any car in the field without rearing the, this uh, big uh, cube with us around. Um, and this micro megawatt charger is powered by a USB-C power bank. So you just need to make sure it is charged before you go out. And then uh, you can this, take this gun in your backpack and test any car uh, that is standing around. Uh, um, yeah, and it also have a local OCPP backend, so no internet connection is required. Um, and you can do some AC protocol testing, um, but yeah, without power delivery, so there's no AC generator on this. And uh, yeah, my, my favorite picture is uh, there in the bottom right, uh, where we have, uh, I don't know the English word, uh, Gabelstapler, um, because normally you would need one to uh, test cars in the field. Um, yeah, and the next slide, um, as I already told, uh, the idea is to have it portable and uh, handheld. Uh, you can uh, easily generate log files with it, and you can put the log files in the uh, public shared log file repository. So there we have a collection of log files where we sum up uh, which car supports which protocols and where might be bugs and so on. So um, yeah, you can check it out uh, via the link. Yeah, and in the end, uh, how to get involved. Um, it doesn't uh, matter if you um, are using Everest for a private project or maybe you build a charging station and you want to sell it, you can contribute. Um, but uh, yeah, also if you found an issue or you have a really nice uh, feature idea, just uh, post it on GitHub and together we can Everest make even better. <laughs> And yeah, in the bottom right, I just, make, uh, just made a, a small URL summary uh, where you can get contact or find stuff on our project. Yeah, and last thing to say, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for listening. Um, and I think we have time for a Q&A, uh, but I have to say, uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure about uh, if I can answer every question, but we can try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, could you repeat the last part? Is there a standard in for the in-car CAN bus to communicate with the car's charging system to get information about the charging session or is that manufacturer specific data? Um, I'm not really sure about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sorry, can't answer. <laughs> and the word you're looking for is forklift. Ah, forklift, yeah. So uh, the question was, um, if there's a protocol to access from the inside of the car the um, data of the charging session, is it correct? Yeah, and uh, I don't have an answer. <laughs> I'm, I, I think, I'm not quite sure about it, I think ISO 15.11.8 supports um, yeah, something like um, internet access services. So I think the idea is there that you have information on the display in your car and maybe even more information, uh, but not sure about it. Okay, uh, any more questions I might not answer? <laughs> okay, nice. Then uh, thank you very much for listening and have a nice day.